Okay, let's move to Virginia now. It's its new two-year budget cuts spending in many areas. Also contains about $6 billion in increased spending for things like education and transportation. And the Republican governor of Virginia, Bob McDonald, joins us on the program uh, right now. We talk about states, and Governor, thank you very much for coming on, by the way. We, Thanks, Connell. We talk about states all the time and their, and their finances. The, the angle I would take on what you're doing in Virginia, and correct me if you think I'm taking the wrong angle, would be this, because we talk about the federal government all the time and the divide between Republicans and Democrats. And here I am talking to a Republican governor who, of course, cuts spending and feels like he has to, and understandably so, but also increases spending in certain areas. I mentioned education and, and, and um, transportation. That's not what we hear out of the uh, Republicans in Washington all the time. It sounds like you're taking a quote-unquote balanced approach, that you're willing to take a look at it and, yeah, maybe spend some more money if you have to. Well, governors have an, have an obligation to balance the budget. Very different concept than what they do in Washington, where they spend more and more deficit and more debt and don't, uh, don't uh, make ends meet. We've uh, grown the last couple of years because our job numbers are up. We've been ranked the most business-friendly state. Unemployment's down to 6.2 percent. And so, Connell, the reason we've got more revenues is because we've got more economic activity. We're projecting 4.5 percent growth in the second year of the budget. And so what we're doing is reallocating some money from lower priority to high priority areas. We're trying to solve some big problems. But I tell you, the other thing we're doing is we're storing a lot of that money away in the rainy day fund uh, and a special fund to get ready for federal cuts. Uh, and uh, left a lot of money unappropriated. It shows up on the spending side of the ledger, but it's yeah. really increasing liquidity. You cut um, some of the education figures that we showed on the screen uh, a moment ago while, as you said, you reallocated it to other areas. You're being criticized yes. for some of those education cuts by your opponents, and you justify them how? Well, because they're not cuts. Only in Washington would you call a reduction and an increase a cut. <laughs> but that's what some people are doing. Uh, we've actually increased K-12 spending about $438 million this year. Now, about two-thirds of it was to bolster the retirement system for teachers. But there's some other things in this uh, old formula-driven system that didn't make sense in this tough economy that we could fund. Staff requirements and some things like that that aren't dollars in the classroom. So I just made the decision that we could not afford those. And yet some people want to call that a cut. We've right. actually increased it to $438 million. But I am struck by the term you used a moment ago in terms of prioritizing how you do allocate your funds, which are obviously limited as they are in, in all states. And maybe you have things a little bit better, and the unemployment rate reflects this. You're closer to Washington, D.C., yes. where there's been a lot of government jobs, and there are other reasons, but your unemployment rate is, is lower than the national average. But the idea of prioritizing yes. spending, we talk, again, we talk to a lot of Republicans on the show, Democrats as well, but we talk to a lot of Republicans who come on with the cut, cut, cut message, and you're basically saying that there should be some priority in terms of government does have a role in certain areas. You are, right? Oh, well, absolutely. But that's true in every state and on a federal level. There are core things that your statute, your constitution requires uh, in education and colleges and public safety, transportation, health care. Certain things you got to do, but we're doing it with more transparency and more accountability. Last year in the tough budget times, I had to cut about uh, six billion dollars out of the budget. We did it without raising taxes, but now we're growing again, had a billion in surplus, and now we can afford to do some things that we couldn't do before. But we're doing it in a different way with more accountability and uh, making people uh, uh, report better how they're spending those dollars. To me, that makes sense. Fair enough. Good conversation. And Merry Christmas, by the way, uh, Governor. You know, um, Thanks, Connell. I was told to ask you about as well. I don't know a heck of a lot about this, but speaking of Christmas, that the uh, things in Richmond get a little bit over the top in terms of Christmas light displays. <laughs> Is that right? We have some of these yeah. pictures where they go, they go, what's the deal there? They, they go crazy on Christmas lights. Probably spend a, a lot of money on but them. We are, well, Richmond, Virginia is the capital of uh, not only college basketball, but tacky lights. <laughs> and uh, we make a lot, we, <laughs> we have a lot of people having fun at this time of the year with the tacky lights tour. In fact, my daughter went on the tour on Saturday night. It's actually nice, makes people feel good, even right. with the tough economy. And you know what? The power <laughs> companies love it. Some of these pictures are pretty funny. Yeah, then I bet the power companies love it because these people are, <laughs> have spent a lot of dough on lights. All right. Again, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, uh, Governor McCann. Thank you very Christmas, much for coming Colin. on. Thank you.